Dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood, the man who sells and services the elegant new 54 Dodge presents the Roy Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Bellow Man, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with the song of the story, A Roy and Dale. There is a river called the River of No Return. Well, good evening, folks. Greetings to the whole family. I guess most of you recognize that song we were singing. Actually, there really is a river of no return. It's the Salmon River up in the Idaho country. And a while back, Dale and Pat and me were up there on a fishing trip. Now, I don't want this to sound like a typical fish story, but take it from me, the rainbow trout up there run as big as, well, as big as the biggest trout that ever got away. And the little town of Tanner, where we stayed, well, it's like something right out of the Old West. All those stories you've read and the movies you've seen about feuds and gunfights on the street, well, there are still places where they actually happen. Places like Tanner, where the people have their own peculiar brand of law and order and their own ideas of right and wrong. Well, it was just about sundown when we pulled into town. We got the trigger all bedded down. And while Pat was checking us into the hotel, Dale and I went over to the general store to get our fishing license for the next day. Oh, here's the general store. Howdy. Hi. I do. Help you folks? Yes, we'd like to get three fishing licenses, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, Non-residents, ain't you? That's right. I'm Roy Rogers, and this is Dale Evans. Oh, well, how do you do? We met up with a fellow a while back who lives here, and he told us the rainbow really run big around these parts. Well, that all depends on who was doing the telling. Tom Dillon was his name. We met him on location while we were making... Tom Dillon. That's right. Did I understand you right? You say your name is Roy Rogers? Yes. You sure you came up here to fish? Well, yes. Hmm. You sure you didn't come up here to revenge Tom? Revenge? What do you mean? Tom Dillon's dead. Dead? There must be some mistake. Well, we just saw him last week. He was in perfect health. No mistake, ma'am. We buried him this morning. Well, what did he die of? Holes in his chest. The kind of forty-five makes. <laughs> In just a moment, Roy and Dale will return with part one of a story that happened near the river of no return. Now, folks, here are the Mellow Men. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of a Dodge Stop rated truck. It delivers the goods anytime, anywhere. Choose the six or V8, you've got power to spare. Dodge is rugged and handsome, it's all brand new. Dodge is priced so low, you say. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of a Dodge Stop rated truck. Drive it today. It's a fact. There is a better deal for the man at the wheel with new Dodge job-rated trucks. New Dodge trucks now offer the world's most efficient engines, modern power dome V8s. No other comparable V8 truck engine equals the Dodge truck power dome V8 for high power, efficiency, and money-saving operation. Its unique dome-shaped combustion chambers give you more miles to the gallon, more power from regular fuel. Stop by at your dependable Dodge truck dealer soon and test a new Dodge Truck Power Dome V8 or famous Thrifty Six. And now back to Roy Rogers and Dale Evans in part one of tonight's story. Now then, if, if you'll just step over here and sign the license book... Uh, how'd it happen, mister? Cooper's the name. Cy Cooper. How'd what happen? Tom Dillon. Did somebody murder him? Hold on now. I never said nothing about no murder. And don't you leave here saying I did. Oh, sir, it wouldn't be healthy for me. 
All right, Mr. Cooper. Then if it wasn't murder, what was it? Well, now, you might call it a form of suicide. Suicide? Tom done a real foolish thing, Miss Evans. He crossed Buck Santee. In these parts, that's the same as putting a gun to your hat band and snapping the hammer. Well, now, just a minute. Are you telling us that Tom Dillon was killed by Buck Santee in an old-fashioned gunfight? I don't reckon folks up around these parts would take kindly to hear you call it old-fashioned, Mr. Rogers. After all, you've built up quite a reputation yourself for being fast with a gun. But that's in the movies, Mr. Cooper. You mean you ain't really fast with a gun? Of course he is. He's one of the fastest men alive. Uh Uh-huh. That's what I thought. So, naturally, if anybody challenged his rights to be top gun, he'd have to do something about it, wouldn't he? You mean that uh, that's what happened between Tom Dillon and this uh, Buck Santee? I reckon you've played the scene often enough in the movies to know, Mr. Rogers. Tom and Buck had words the night before, so they set up an appointment to meet out there in the street the next day. Tom stood at one end on the boardwalk. Buck stood at the other in the middle of the street. Then they started walking toward each other, real slow life. They kept their hands to their sides, kind of bent out a little, and on top of their guns. They kept walking closer and closer to each other, both waiting for the other one to make the first move. Then, all of a sudden... Like I said, it's a form of suicide to try to outdraw the fastest gun in the West. Roy, it's incredible. I just can't believe that anything like this could happen today. Mr. Cooper, I suppose you've got something that passes for law and order around here. We got a sheriff. Well, where was he while all this was going on? Fishy. Well, did he know the fight was going to take place? Mr. Rogers, I don't think the town folks would take kindly to a stranger coming around and trying to change our ways. We've been getting along all right for a right smart spell. Anybody don't like the way we do things up here, there's only one really smart thing for them to do. What's that? Get out. Hi, Bullet. Everything all right, Pat? Oh, sure. Everything's fine. Who are your friends, Pat? Oh, a couple of fans of yours. (laughs) They want your autograph. I <clears throat> already given mine. Gosh, are you really Roy Rogers and Dale Evans? That's right. That's right. Gosh, but you always wear two guns, Roy. How come you ain't wearing them? Well, I just come up here to do a little fishing. Do you think I'll need my guns for that? No, but I'd sure like to see you use them. Roy, would you sign your name to me, personal? Sure. What is it? Bart McWhorter. Bart McWhorter. Good luck from Roy Rogers. There you are, Bart. Now, what's your name, son? Lester Santee. Santee? Yeah. My pop's Buck Santee. You reckon he can outdraw you, Roy? Well, I... I wouldn't know, Lester. Boy, I'd sure like to find out. Wouldn't you, Bart? Yeah, sure would. Say, Roy, did the man at the general store tell you what kind of bait to use? No, he didn't, Pat. I guess I got too interested in Tom Dillon. Yeah. Clerk at the hotel told me Buck Santee is a real tough hombre. I guess he just about runs this town. And they ought to make him sheriff. (laughs) That's what I said. They said he don't want to be sheriff. He just wants to be top gun. Excuse me, Mr. Rogers. Boy, just delivered this note. It's for you. Thank you. What is it, Roy? What does it say? Please leave Tanner tonight. Your life is in danger. What? Who's it from? It isn't signed. Looks like it might be a woman's handwriting. Roy, I don't like this. Maybe we should leave. Now, take it easy, Dale. I came up here to fish, and we're going to stay here and fish. Sure, this is 
a spot the man said to try. I ain't even had a nibble. Well, he said the rapids, and this water is sure rapid. Yeah. Boy, I'd hate to fall in around here. Hey, Dale, how are you doing? No luck yet. How about you? Nothing. I'm going to change to cheese. These salmon eggs ain't getting me nowhere. I think I'll try that spot over there. Be careful, Roy. These rocks are slippery. I will. Okay, now, little fishies. Let's try some of this nice, fresh cheese. Roy, Dale, I got me one. Oh, easy, Pat. Plain. Not too fast, Pat. Yeah. I got you now. You big Roy, Dale. The line's caught in the rock. I'm stuck. I'm... Uh, 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 You better get in some dry clothes, Pat. You were just lucky you fell in close to shore. If you'd been farther out, those rapids might have carried you clear away. Oh, well, I never worry about a thing like... Boy, they sure were rapid rapids, weren't they? Well, here's the hotel. Let's go in. Roy? Yeah? Look at this town. The street's practically deserted. Yeah, I see. Maybe everybody's gone fishing. Mr. Rogers? Mr. Rogers? Yes? It's Mr. Cooper. Don't go into the hotel. Why not? Buck Santee. He's, he's in there. We're waiting for you. But why? What's he got against Roy? He's top gun, Miss Evans, and he aims to stay top gun in these parts. So let him. Roy hasn't challenged him. It don't matter. Don't you see, Roy? People know you're fast. These ways, you're fast in the movies. Folks all been speculating on it ever since you got here. Kids are even making bets on it. Rogers. That's him. That's Santee inside the hotel. Come on in, Rogers. I'm waiting for you. Roy, what are you going to do? Do? Why, Dale, I'm going in the hotel. See what Mr. Buck Santee has on his mind. In just a moment, Roy and Dale will return with the second part of tonight's story. Listen carefully. Here's exciting news for you. The big, beautiful 54 Dodge is the lowest-priced V8 in its field. Yes, the Dodge V8 gives you more car for your money at the lowest price of any V8 in its field. Take a look at the beautiful new Dodge V8. Note those sleek, long, low, flowing lines. That's real beauty, natural beauty, but better than just looking. Step inside a new Dodge. Now notice all that extra headroom, legroom, and shoulder room. Plenty of space to move around in. Yes, the 54 Dodge is a big car. There's big car power, big car luxury, and best of all, big car value. So remember the exciting news. The Dodge V8 is the lowest-priced V8 in its field. Stop in and see the beautiful, long, low 54 Dodge tomorrow. Your friendly Dodge Plymouth dealer is the man to see. And while you're there... If you want a good, dependable used car, see the first choice Roy Rogers specials your Dodge dealer has for you. And now back to Roy Rogers and Dale Evans in part two of a story that happened near the river of no return. Roy, wait. Don't go in there, please. I'm not armed, Dale. Buck Santee wouldn't be proving anything by shooting a man who isn't wearing his gun. But Santee doesn't know that you're not armed. He'll know it when he sees me. But maybe he won't wait, Roy. Boy, he's fast. Maybe he'll shoot before he looks. I'll take that chance. You and Dale wait here, Pat. I'm going in. to 
shoot up the pianola. You broke it. Shut your mouth and get back to your dishes. Okay, Buck. I scare you, Rogers? That was what you call a near miss, wasn't it? How come you ain't toting your guns? Where are they at? I came up here to do a little fishing. My guns are up in my room. You better get them. Next time, I might forget to notice that you ain't aware of it. Do I have to fight you, Santee? No. No, you don't have to. You could leave town sudden-like, say tonight, like maybe you was afraid of me. Don't press me, Buck. Don't press me. Oh, I'm afraid I have to, Rogers. I got nothing against you personally. It's too bad you had to come up here. But now that you did, I'm going to draw against you. I got to draw against you, otherwise people around these parts won't know I'm still Top Gun. You can be Top Gun, Santee. Tell you what I'll do. When I get back to Hollywood, I'll tell everybody that you're faster on the draw than I am. <laughs> Hollywood. I don't care none about Hollywood, Rogers. I care about Tanner. Ain't nothing you can do now. Just you being here is enough. Folks are saying you're faster than me. Even my young'uns are wondering about it. I see. Well, why not have a shooting match at a target? No, Rogers, no, it wouldn't do. Targets can't draw guns. No, sir, we got no choice except to settle this between ourselves. Now, let me see. I'll give you an hour. Just one hour from now. Either be at the south end of the street or get out of town. You're pressing me, Buck. I mean to, Rogers. I'll be down the north side of Main Street near the drugstore. You either be out of town an hour or you'll be ready to fight. And if you ain't out of town and you ain't ready to fight, I'm going to have to kill you. Well, I tried to get the sheriff like you said, but he's gone fishing. Fishing. Every time there's any trouble, the sheriff goes fishing. Yeah, nobody in town seems to want to fetch him back. Where's Roy? Well, he's in his room getting his guns ready. Oh, Pat, you've got to stop him. I'll see what I can do. I'll go have a talk with him. I'll see you. Oh, oh. oh excuse me, ma'am. I'm uh, sorry. Is this Miss Evans' room? Yes, I'm Dale Evans. Well, my name is Eleanor Santee. I'm Buck Santee's wife. May I see you for a minute? Of course, Mrs. Santee. Come in. I'll check with you later, Dale. Okay, Pat. I suppose you know why I'm here, Miss Evans. Yes, I think I do. I've, I've always heard that you were a fine Christian woman, Miss Evans. So I, I've come to throw myself on your mercy. You've got to help me. Just what do you want me to do, Mrs. Santos? Stop those two men from killing each other. I, I want my husband home, alive. Don't worry. He'll be alive. You mean... You mean you think buckle out draw, Roy Rogers? No, ma'am. But Roy has never killed or shot to kill in his life. He won't do it today. If Roy outdraws your husband, he won't shoot to kill. Oh, but Miss Evans, Buck's fast. Faster than any man Roy's ever met up with. This ain't the movies, Miss Evans. I know. But there's nothing else Roy can do. Your husband has put him to a challenge. I, I couldn't ask him to leave town without meeting it. Anyway, Roy wouldn't do it. Oh, Miss Evans, what are we going to do? <laughs> I have a suggestion, Mrs. Santee, if you won't think it's foolish. What? Would you join me in prayer? The hour's up, Roy. You ready? Yeah, Pat. Let's go. Hey, you want me to cover you, Roy? This Santee may be yellow. He might have a confederate waiting to plug you in the back. No, Pat, I don't think he'll do that. He's too sick to play any tricks. Sick? Yeah, he's sick with pride. False pride. Uh, he's like Billy the Kid, Pat. Johnny Ringo and Dillinger. He's sick, and he's afraid. Hey, 
Well, this is it, Roy. You gonna walk down there and meet him? Yes, Pat. I am. Uh, well, I don't guess there's nothing I can say to make you change your mind. No, there isn't. I didn't think there was. Well, good luck, Roy. Thanks. Good luck, Mr. Rogers. I hope you get him, Roy. I see you come, Rogers. I'm here, Santee. You sure you don't want to change your mind? Keep walking, Rogers. I'm coming out to meet you. Mr. Santee, it's Lester. He's drowning in the rapids. Did you hear that, Santee? I heard. Well, what are you going to do about it? Ain't nothing I can do. I can't swim. I can. You want to call this off and try to save your son? Save him, Rogers. For God's sake, save him. I see him. He's too far out, Rogers. You can't swim in the rapids. Pat. Yeah, Roy. Tie this rope around me. Okay. Roy, you'll never make it. I'm going to ride Trigger out. I think between the two of us, we can make it. How about it, Trigger? <laughs> Mr. Rogers, I'll never be able to thank you, even if you don't save him. We'll save him, Mrs. Santee. Pat, come upstream with me. Hold on to that rope. Go on, Trigger. That's the boy. You can make it. Lester, I'm going to throw you a rope. If you catch it, tie it around yourself. We'll haul you in. Okay? Okay, Roy. All right, then. Here goes. I got it, Mr. Rogers. I got it. That was a wonderful thing you did, Roy. It sure was. I didn't do much, Dale. It was Trigger. He really had the hard work. Well, anyway, I guess Mrs. Santee and I had our prayers answered. Buck told her that he'd thrown his guns in the river. He's never going to wear them again. I'm sure glad to hear that. Yeah. He said that if he just happened to outdraw you, his boy might have drowned. It sure is a lucky thing we came up to Tanner on a fishing trip. You know... It makes me realize all the more the Lord moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. And folks, that's the whole story of what happened to Dale and Pat and me the time we went fishing on the river of no return. There is a river called the river of no return. Sometimes it's peaceful and sometimes wild and free love is a traveler on the river of no return swept on forever to be lost in the stormy sea whalerie I can hear the river call. No return, no return. Where the roaring waters fall. Whalery. Whalery. I can hear the river call. Come to me. Whalery. Whalery. I lost my way on the river. And forever my heart will yearn. Gone, gone forever. Down the river of no return. There is a river called the river of no return. No return. Sometimes it's peaceful and sometimes wild and free. No return. Love is a traveler on the river of no return. No return. 
river call. No return, no return. Where the roaring waters fall. Whaleree, whaleree. I can hear the river call. Come to me. Whaleree, whaleree. I lost my way on the river, and forever my heart will yearn. Gone, gone forever, down the river of no return. Whaleree, whaleree, whaleree. Friends, when you buy a new car, you're looking for something special, aren't you? You're looking for a car you can depend on. You want a good-looking car, of course, but more than that, you want one that really comes through when the going gets rough. Well, I've told you that Dale and I have driven Dodges for a good many years. Yes, sir, and we've sure been proud of every one of them because we've found the Dodge people make a car you can depend on, not just on smooth city streets, but out here in the West, where the dusty, bumpy roads give a car a real going over. And another thing, you want plenty of room inside a car. I know. I've got pretty long legs myself, and I need lots of room to stretch out in. That's one big reason why I'm so proud of my new Dodge. It's just a big, roomy, comfortable car. Well, that's about all I have to say except for one thing. Remember, the big, beautiful 54 Dodge is the lowest-priced V8 in its field. That's right, friends. A Dodge V8 costs you less than any other V8 in its field. So take my advice. Drop around and see your nearby Dodge Plymouth dealer tomorrow. He'll show you a right pretty car that's really dependable. The new 54 Dodge. And if you like, take a look at some of the first choice used cars he's got on his lot right now. They're all fine cars and they're priced especially for your pocketbook. Well, that does it for tonight, folks. See you next Thursday, same time. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. Happy trails with Dodge, the car that gives you more. The Roy Rogers Radio Show is produced under the supervision of Art Rush and directed by Ralph Rose. Tonight's story was written by Ralph Rose and Charles Smith. Music arranged and conducted by Frank Worth. Production assistant, Virginia White. Tonight's all-star cast included Pat Brady, The Mellow Man, Jane Webb, Tony Barrett, Harley Bear, David Duvall, and Peter Votrian. Join us again next Thursday evening at the same time when the dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood will again bring you the transcribed Roy Rogers radio show. This is Lou Crosby speaking for the man who sells and services Dodge job-rated trucks and the elegant new 54 Dodge.